one of you in my comments is more persistent than the others. All right, we're doing it. We're doing a bad commander today. We're calling the bad commander challenge. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. It's just something this guy keeps bugging me about, and I don't want to call him out, but he'll probably, hopefully, you better say thank you. Anyway, so today, guys, we're talking about Kulfenor, The Last You. If you guys haven't seen this guy, he's terrible. I'm just kidding. He's not that bad. He's he's okay. He's just not super powerful. Anyway, guys, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Please stick around to the end of the video. I'll show you a little baby combo that we got with him. Uh, he's pretty cool. He's just hard to build around. He's just a hard commander to get to work. Anyway, so he's a six drop, three seven, uh, three generic, one black, blue, or sorry, one black, green, and white. Legendary tree folk, shaman, vigilance, reach. When Kulfenor, the last you or another creature you control, dies, and turn it up to one other target creature card with lesser toughness from your graveyard to hand. Okay, so one of the nice things about this commander is that he doesn't... Like, if you start losing creatures early in the game, you're not really hurt by that because Kulpanor is going to let them come back later. So if you're having creatures just go into the yard really early, you're not terribly hurt because you can eventually start getting those creatures out later to help re or sorry, bring those creatures back to your hand. And they're just going back to your hand. That's one of the hardest parts about this guy. Is he's not even reanimating them. So, anyway, honorable mentions. We have uh, Foundation Breaker and Shriek Maw. To surprise no one, Evoke is a very good combo, a good uh, mechanic in this build. Foundation Breaker uh, is a four drop, but it evokes for a green and a generic. Enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Super good. Uh, so technically, Evoke enters the battlefield and then it goes to the graveyard. So it'll trigger Kulfenor. Shriek Maw, uh, similarly, is a 5 drop, 3 2, Fear. It says when it enters the battlefield, destroy target, non artifact, non black creature. So it's a limited on what it can uh, kill, but again, it evokes, touches the battlefield, and then goes to the graveyard. Super good for getting our death triggers with Kulfenor. Number six on our list is. Feed the pack. If you haven't seen this guy, this is really, really a great card for anything that is focused on toughness. It's a one green, five generic. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do, put X two two green wolf creature tokens onto the battlefield, where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. This is so good, and we're going to be talking about other cards that go really, really well with this. Uh, well, basically everything because whenever an X power creature enters the battle or enters the graveyard, it checks what it, what power it was while it was on the battlefield. So if it's a Hydra of some kind, it's power and toughness are technically zero, zero. It will see that it was a 10, 10 whenever it died and feed the pack will give you 10 to two wolves. Really cool. Anyway, next up we have gutter grime. It's a five drop cool card. One green four generic. It says, Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put a slime counter on Gutter Grime. Then put a green ooze creature token on the battlefield with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of grime slime, slime counters on Gutter Grime. Okay, so this is cool, but every time we get a non-token creature, all of these oozes are going to be getting bigger. So this is just kind of like, uh, almost like a, a green version of Assemble the Legion. No, not really. Anyway, but it's a green card that's going to get us a lot of creatures, and they're going to get big. Surprisingly big. Next up on our list, we have Scourge of Skull of Ale. It's a one green, two generic, a zero, zero trample. It says when it enters battlefield, put two one, one counters on it. This is important. This is important. A creature that enters the battlefield and gets 1-1 counters will be useful to us whenever we just straight up reanimate it. Because if I reanimate a normal Hydra as a 1 and X, it's going to come into the, bat into the battlefield as a 0-0 zero, zero and die again. Whereas Scourge of Skull of Ale is always going to come into play with two counters. Very useful in a deck like this where we're going to try and reanimate as well. Tap, sacrifice another creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Scourge of Skull of Ale equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. That is good. Very, very good. Okay, so we're focused on toughness. This guy just plays right along with it. It wasn't even on EDH Rec, and I don't know why, but it's good. Anyway, next up, we have Ailey Eternal Pilgrim. One black, one white, two, three death touch. Pay one generic. Sack another creature. You gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. 
Wait, okay. Now we have a sack outlet for one generic, and then we also have a way of gaining some life. But one generic, one black, one white, sacrifice another creature. Exile target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only if you have at least 10 more life than your starting life total. In commander, 50 life. In normal situations, 30 life. Okay, so this is a good card if you can get up to that 50 mark, and then you just start removing everything, and then we're just going to go nuts. Go ham. Uh, then we have the next card on our list is Gave Guru of Spores. It's one black, green, white, two generic, zero, zero fungus shaman. Again, a creature that enters the battlefield with its own 1-1 counters. It says it enters with five counters on it. Pay one, remove a 1-1 counter, create a 1-1 green separately creature token. Cool. Pay one, sack a creature, put a 1-1 counter on target, on target creature. So this is kind of just like a, a way of moving around a bunch of 1-1 counters. Very cool, but it does play well with number one on our list. And that would happen to be Nethroy Apex of Death. Okay, so Nethroy Apex of Death is one black, green, white, and two generic 5-5. Five, five. But it can mutate for three, four generic, uh, hybrid green, black, uh, green, white, and then double black. And it says Death Touch Lifelink. Whenever this creature mutates, mutating a target creature in play, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's two conditions that you really want to target. Something with low power and enters the battlefield and gets power. So for instance, that would be Gave. That cost is zero power in the graveyard. So whenever Nethroy looks at it, it's just a free creature that comes into play with Nethroy. Similarly, Scourge of Skull of Ale also has zero power. So it checks with Nethroy and it also gets reanimated. So this is a very, very good combo, if you will. And then whenever you enter the battle, it enters the battlefield, it's going to make whatever you mutated onto very, very stupid big. Okay, but our combos in this deck that I really, really want to encourage you are is like Secure Tribe Elder and Scourge of Skull of Ale. So look at this. Okay, so when Secure Tribe Elder goes to the graveyard because we've sacked it and looked for a land, it's going to have one power and Scourge of Skull of Ale is going to have zero power. So Kulkanor is going to say, put Scourge of Skull of Ale back into your hand. Scourge of, Skull, uh, Scourge of Skull of Ale, if it dies, it's going to put, be able to put Secure Tribe Elder back in our hand. So because it's going to die as a 2-2 at least. So they're going to switch back and forth. You're going to get constant value out of them. Just super good business. Additionally, if you want to tap Scourge of Skull of Ale and sack something else, say like for instance, uh, Gave Guru of Spores to Scourge of Skull of Ale, then you can start reanimating Gave, uh, bringing Gave back to your hand. Very cool cards. I like them a lot. Now, another one that I want to mention in this combo is Secure Tribe Builder and Gift of Immortality. Okay, Gift of Immortality is going to let our creature die and then bring it back to the battlefield. At the end of turn, Gift of Immortality returns enchanted to that creature. Now, uh, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So one time around the table, and this is at the beginning of each end step, the next end step. So I can sacrifice with Gift of Immortality on Secure Tribe Elder. On my turn, I sacrifice Secure Tribe Elder, go get a land. Gift of Immortality and Secure Tribe Elder, go to the graveyard. Secure Tribe Elder comes back immediately. I wait till my turn ends. Gift of Immortality comes back on a Secure Tribe Elder. The next turn begins. As the next turn begins, I sacrifice Secure Tribe Elder again. Go getting another land. Gift of Immortality goes to the graveyard. Secure Tribe Elder comes back into play. And then at the end of my opponent's turn, I get Gift of Immortality back on Secure Tribe Elder. Every turn that it happens at the table, I can go basically go get a basic land from my library and put it into play tapped. From a normal four-player EDH game, on turn three, I can enchant my Secure Tribe Elder, get a land that turn, my opponent's turn, my opponent's turn, my opponent's turn, and then I start my turn with seven lands in play without having played my land for the turn. This is so much damn value. I can't, I can't, can't. Bleh. And plus, if you enchant something else with Gift of Immortality, and then you keep sacri sacrificing with Scourge of Skull of Ale, say something big like Nethroy Apex of Death, then you're going to get five, five power on Scourge of Skull of Ale every time you sack it with, uh, with Gift of Immortality. Gift of Immortality is an all-star in this deck, and I didn't even see it on EDH Rec. All right, the dude has been bugging me. 
Much heart, long loves. You got your video about Kalfanor. I love you. <laughs> All right, guys. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And have a great day. Bye! Wait, how do I stop recording? Buttons.